Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Alexander Shostov and Andrei Storchenko. Um, the central open problem, I think, uh, in the quantum computing is how much faster can quantum computers be than a classical computer? And uh, much of the research has focused on uh, the query model. And here I uh, listed a few very well-known uh, algorithms um, that are captured by the query model. So including the duch jusa algorithm, bernstein badrani algorithm, uh, etc., exhibiting a significant quantum speed ups. Uh, in the classical setting, a query algorithm is simply a decision tree. And in this example, uh, we can first query the variable x1, and depending on the value of x1, we query either x2 or x3. And we repeat this procedure until we reach the leaf of this tree. And the label on the tree should be the output of this function. Now, throughout this talk, we are going to focus on Boolean functions, and we are going to use this minus one, one representation uh, to encode the input bit. Now, a randomized decision tree is simply a distribution on decision trees. And we say that the randomized decision tree computes a function f uh, with arrow epsilon if the probability that this tree outputs a wrong value is at most epsilon for any input. Sometimes the, the function are not defined on the entire Boolean cube. And we call such functions partial functions. Uh, and uh, the function and the, the correctness criteria for these kind of functions only applies uh, to the inputs with the defined output. Now, the randomized query complexity uh, of the problem f with respect to the error parameter epsilon is defined to be the minimum depth of a randomized decision tree for f uh, with error epsilon. So that was uh, the classical query algorithm. And now let's review uh, the quantum query algorithms. So in a quantum algorithm, we will be able to make queries in superposition. So here uh, we put the query indices in superposition. And uh, as a result, in a single query, we will be able to access all Xi. Uh, but these values are stored in the amplitudes of the quantum states. So it is not immediately how we are going to obtain uh, the information that we need. And as, as we already discussed, the quantum, the query model captures um, nearly all quantum breakthroughs. So a natural and fundamental question to ask is like what, how much more efficient can a quantum query algorithm be than the randomized uh, query algorithm? And Simon was the first to exhibit an exponential speed up. In particular, he shows that there is a task that a quantum algorithm can solve with polylog n queries. But any randomized algorithm would require um, square root of n, at least square root of n queries. So Simon's work raises a natural follow-up question. What is the largest possible separation between randomized and quantum query complexity? For example, can we have a const, can we have a, like n versus constant separation between the randomized quantum query complexity. And this question was first explicitly asked by Berman et al. And then by Ronson and Ambinus. So towards resolving this question, Ronson and Ambinus introduced the correlation problem. They show that there is quantum algorithm that can solve the correlation problem using a single query but on the other hand, any randomized algorithm would require at least square root of n queries. So they also show uh, a simulation result, which says the following. 
if we have a quantum algorithm that uses k by two queries for constant k, then this quantum algorithm can be simulated by a randomized algorithm using n to the one minus one by k queries. So this simulation results rules out the linear versus constant separation that one might hope for. In recent years, Paul generalized, generalized the correlation problem and he refers to this generalization as the raw relation problem, which is a family of Boolean functions defined with respect to a parameter k. He shows that the raw relation problem can be solved by quantum algorithms using k by two queries, but any randomized algorithm would require n to the 2k minus two divided by 3k minus one queries. So in our work, uh, we give a tight analysis of the raw relation pr problem. In particular, we show that the randomized uh, query complexity of the raw relation problem is in fact n to the one minus one by k. So in view of Ronson and Abinus simulation results, this is an optimal lower bound. And this separation is the best one can get. Now let me describe our results in more detail. So let k be any positive integer that is no larger than log n by three, then there is a function, a partial function, whose quantum query complexity with respect to this error parameter is k by two. But, uh, but it's randomized query complexity with respect to this error parameter is at least n to the one minus k divided by log n to the two minus one by k. So for constant k, these error parameters are all bounded away from a half. And of course, we can apply the standard error reduction uh, to get the complexity measures with respect to the more familiar error parameter of one third. And in that case, the quantum query complexity would be exponential in K. And the randomized query complexity is still n to the one minus K divided by poly log n. So now if we uh, take different kind of case, we can exhibit different kinds of separations. For example, if we take a large constant K, then we can exhibit this kind of separation of a constant versus n to the one minus epsilon for an arbitrarily small positive epsilon. We can also take k to be, to be a slow growing function uh, like log 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 n. Then what we get is separation of a slow growing function versus n to the one minus little o one. So all these results are with respect to partial functions. Uh, as for total functions, it is well known that these two measures are actually polynomial related. And prior to our work, the largest separation was given by Paul. He shows that there is function whose randomized query complexity is at least its quantum query complexity raised to power of eight by three. And on the other hand, Aronson et al, they, uh, they showed that a quantum query algorithm can exhibit at most a quadric speed up. So this was uh, presented uh, yesterday. Um, now in our work, we improve on Paul's result by a polynomial factor. In particular, we show that there is a cubic separation uh, between the randomized and quantum query complexity for some functions. So this result is obtained by, uh, by using the Chishim method introduced by Aronson et al. So now our, our, our results on the query model also implies similar separation results in the communication model. Uh, in particular, we showed that for partial functions, there is, um, there is a problem uh, which can be solved by a quantum protocol using 
log n bits of communication, but uh, a randomized protocol would require n to the one minus epsilon uh, communication. So this is a near optimal uh, separation. And this result is based on the lifting theorem. So uh, it lifts a harness results from the query model uh, to the communication model automatically. And analogously, for total functions, we improve on prior results by a polynomial factor. In particular, we show that there is this cubic separation between randomized and the quantum communication complexity. So at the heart of all the above separation results is the following, is the following Fourier analytic bound on decision trees, which we believe is important on its own right. In, in particular, we show that for any decision tree G of depth D, take the absolute values of the Fourier coefficient from the level L of the Fourier spectrum, then this summation is bounded by a constant, an absolute constant raised to L times square root of D choose L times one plus log N to the L minus one. This bound is essentially optimal and there are examples showing the dependency of D choose L and log N uh, are tight. And this settles the conjecture by tau uh, the previous bounds becomes trivial beyond the level, the, level, the, the layer of uh, square root of D. So this was the main obstacle why uh, the previous work didn't obtain the optimal separation. And also independent of our work, Benzo and Singha, they obtained a similar result, remarkably by a completely different approach. So their analysis uses a more advanced machinery, the stochastic calculus, where our analysis is purely for analytic, uh, and we think it's more elementary. And also as a side product of our analysis, we obtain this optimal Fourier weight on decision trees. Um, and uh, in the analysis of Benzo and Singha, they don't need to attack this problem. Uh, another thing in our work, uh, our result is existential. While Benzo and Singha's work applies to an explicit function, namely the k fold uh, correlation problem. And in the next uh, talk, they'll present their amazing work. So now let's move on. Uh, let's, let me introduce you the correlation problem. So here we have U, a sorgonal matrix. Uh, it's a parameter of the problem and our inputs are k vectors on m bits. Now we define the relation on k vectors as follows. Take the all one row vectors times the diagonal matrix whose diagonal is the vector x1 times uh, the orthogonal matrix u times the diagonal matrix of x2 uh, dot 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 times the diagonal matrix of xk times the O1 column vector. And then we normalize this number by dividing n. So we get a number uh, whose absolute value is bounded by one. And now we can define the raw relation problem, which is a promised function. So it's one instances corresponds to those inputs that have large raw relation, larger than two to the minus K. And it's zero instances corresponds to the inputs um, that have small raw relation in absolute values, smaller than two to the minus K minus one. And we don't care about the other inputs. And as suggested already by this definition uh, there is a natural quantum algorithm. And indeed, it has been shown that there is a quantum algorithm using k by two queries that accepts any input with probability of the raw relation of the input plus one divided by two. So a slight modification of this algorithm would give us uh, 
the right algorithm that solves the relation problem with the right error parameter. So really the hard part of the analysis is to give a tight lower bound of the randomized complexity, a randomized query complexity of the relation problem, which we follow an indistinguishability argument. So here we have two distributions, a uniform distribution and some correlated distribution. And this for this uniform distribution it can be shown that it has a concentration property, uh, namely if we uh, have uniformly random inputs, it will be it will have small correlation with high probability. In other words, a uniformly random input will be um, a zero instances with high probability. Well, this correlated distribution will have the opposite, the anti-concentration property. So with high probability, um, a random input sampled from this distribution is going to be a one instance. As a consequence, if we have a randomized query algorithm that solves the relation problem with more error, then this algorithm should distinguish these two distributions in the following sense. Take the expectation of uh, our algorithm evaluated at the inputs from the correlated distribution, then this quantity should be close to one and take the expectation of our, our algorithm evaluated at the inputs sampled from the uniform distribution, this quantity should be close to zero. Therefore, they should have the two expectation where have a large difference. However, if G is a shallow decision tree, then they cannot have a large difference by the following Fourier analytic argument. So we apply the Fourier expansion to G um, and observe that first, if we, if we take the expectation of the empty characters, then we always get one. And these two constants cancel out in the two terms. And if we take the expectation of non-empty characters over the uniform distribution, we always get zero. Therefore, this expression simplifies to a weighted sum. So sum of the expectation of non-empty characters over the correlated distribution weighted by the corresponding Fourier weight. And now we group the terms based on the level of the Fourier spectrum. So we sum from level one to level n. And within each level, we take out uh, the maximum of the expectation of the characters uh, within that layer and the multiplies is the L1 norm of the Fourier weight um, of, uh, of level L for a spectrum. So this factor has already been analyzed by Tor. Um, he shows that this quantity decays exponentially fast with respect to L uh, for actually a random orthogonal matrix U with overwhelming probability. Now, if we plug in our bound on these entries, we can calculate that this big sum is gonna be small if the decision tree is shallow. And therefore the randomized query uh, complexity of correlation has to be large. Now let's move on to the analysis of the Fourier weight of decision trees. So uh, <clears throat> recall that uh, what we are going to what we are going to prove is the following result. We take the absolute values of the Fourier coefficients from the level L of the Fourier spectrum, um, and we bound its sum by this quantity. Uh, in the remaining of this talk, we are going to use this shorthand notation for this big summation. So level L Fourier weight of tree T. And in fact, we're going to prove something a little bit more general. So we're going to allow our tree to output minus one in addition to zero and one. And we are going to keep track of the density of the tree. In other words, the fraction of inputs that 
um, that has a non-zero output. And for such tree, we show that the level L for a weight is bounded by uh, C to the L times square root of D to the L times lambda P. Lambda is a segmented function whose precise expression is the following that we don't need to worry about for this talk. But it has some nice properties. For example, it's increasing and it's concave. And if we plug P equals to one into this expression, um, then we get this log n to the L minus one, which showed up in the previous slide. So now let me give you a very high level idea of our approach. Um, let's, take a, our, let's take a tree P and fix a leaf V. Now write down the label on the tree times indicator function indicating whether our inputs would reach this leaf. And now the decision tree would compute a function, which is a summation of such functions over all possible leaves. And now we massage uh, this indicator functions a little bit. We write it as a sum of product, which can be interpreted as following. We, um, we first select a subset of layers and uh, we study the contribution to the Fourier weight of the characters formed by the variables on the selected layers of this path. Now we can move this summation to the front and the level L4 spectrum of the tree P corresponds to take a sum uh, over those subsets of size L. So next, we are focused on a special kind of subsets, um, which we were referred to as the elementary family. In more detail, so here we first choose I1, a consecutive layers from the tree P, and we then choose I2, I3, dot, 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 Q, I, L. So again, these are consecutive and disjoint uh, layers of the tree P. And we sometimes refer to I1, I2, I, L as in turbos. And now the special kind of subsets of size L are, are those that contain exactly one layer from each interval. And we are going to focus on the contribution to the Fourier coefficients by selecting one variables from each intervals. So of course, there are many different ways uh, to choose these uh, intervals. And our idea is the following. We are going to express the level L for a spectrum of tree T as following. We first select I1, I2, I3, da, 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 and we restrict ourselves to this elementary family and we study uh, the contribution to the Fourier weight restricted to this elementary family. And then we select another set of I1, I2, I3, uh, et cetera. And we study this uh, restriction and so on. So we, we decompose the level L for a spectrum of tree T as a summation of restrictions with respect to different elementary families. And we bound the contributions to the Fourier weight from each restriction and the summation of each restriction would be a bound to the Fourier weight of the level L um, uh, Fourier weight of tree T. So in our paper, we will need to prove two theorems. Uh, first, we need to prove that for any elementary family, uh, no matter how we select the intervals, then we can bound the, the contribution to the Fourier weight restricted to this elementary family as C to the L times square root of the size of the elementary family times this lambda function on the density of the tree T. So this reflects the bound on our main theorem. 
And we also need to show that um, the, L, the set of L subsets can be partitioned into elementary families in an efficient way. In particular, we will show that uh, there exist elementary families um, such that the sum of the square root of the si their size is approximately the square root of the total number of L subsets. And combining all these pieces together, we get the clamped bond. So finally, let me make a quick comment. So this, from what I uh, said, this theorem two is not true. Uh, so in our paper to obtain the optimal bound, we have to define the elementary family a little bit different. In particular, we would allow uh, picking two variables from each interval. Um, but to what we've discussed here captures all the idea. Uh, and that's all, thank you. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, maybe if there's a quick question, we can type it in the Slack now. So there was one question already in Slack, but I think that's been resolved. Um, so in the meantime, let me just ask you, so do you have an opinion on for total functions, randomized versus quantum? So now we know it's at least a third power, at most a fourth power. Yes, do yes. you uh, have any opinion about I, that or so I don't have a, I don't have a strong like uh, uh, intuition but I think uh, many people believe that the, the, the cubic separation is uh, is the right so right yes yes <laughs> so then then your right. the lower bound right. you get would be optimal there as well right right that's that that was that is the conjecture uh, yeah yeah yeah, okay. All right, nothing else has come up on the Slack. So actually, I think we're right on time. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next okay. talk.